What is good? We're back. No, uh, no fresh pops for the Jay Waynes, but he's gonna, he's gonna Man, uncork. It, had a long like, week. I'm not, oh, I'm gonna get this on the mic. Not I feeling that great. I think you got the first one. That's why we're remote. So. Mm, that sounded that sounded like a hearty uh four. Yeah, I mean what are we doing here? All right, well, good way to get the weekend started here. Um we got a little supposed, to, supposed to get a, get rid of a cold, right? If you if you drink liquor. Sure. Straight. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Um, you know, not vitamin C and lots of water. <laughs> I, I, I did that all day, it didn't work, so I'm trying something else. Hey, you know, some onions in your sock, I think. Onions! Well, Bill Raftery. <laughs> I used to really dislike Bill Raftery. Now I can't. I now I'm a big, big fan. Big fan. Big, big fan. fan. All right, what are we doing today? Must buys. Must drafts. Rookie drafts. Must draft. Rookie mock review. Let's get it. Must draft these rookies. Because mm-hmm. uh, you got to tell them what to do to get in, the clicks in a, in a very, very profound manner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like so I we did. Never a, yeah, be we wrong. Did. I'll never be wrong about this. Of course not. And, you know, the real draft's coming up and, and there'll be mm-hmm. some shifting around. But to be fair, I think there's going to be a lot of running backs coming off the board here. And I think a lot of these running backs, I think, are really good as, you know, the contrary to popular del- belief uh, that there's going to be probably, again, some fourth round rece- fourth round running backs that end up helping you out and being pretty damn good. They're dead uh, to me. Now, maybe you'll shift some of your personal rankings because of some capital. And, and I'm sure we will, too. Uh, depending on, you know, some Not biases to. potentially and some, you know, just, hey, this makes Market sense. value, yeah. Right. This makes sense. So, um, but we got a, a draft with some, a couple of public guys and, and some Patreon guys in here. Uh, and it's a super flex tight end premium uh, 0.5 added onto the uh, tight ends there. We got four rounds. In the industry too. We got Colton, J. Yeah. Mike, check, although they're also patrons. So, sure. Favorite dynasty sure. podcast, favorite dynasty podcast, you know. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. So let's get this thing rolling. And as we're going through, we'll, we'll talk about the values in a couple of these must drafts. And if, you know, the fucking must draft guys will be in the damn timestamps, you sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. No more complaints about timestamps. They're always fucking there. Yo, all I right? can't, like, I can't, I can't. Another complaint about timestamps. Like, fucking scroll down. They're there for you. For yeah. you. You know, you're never going to grow this podcast if you don't have timestamps. Yo, that's shit. I was just like, I was so. You're never gonna be computer do. literate if you can't find timestamps. I was so nice too. I'm just trying to kill him with kill kindness, him with kindness, baby. I want to just lose my mind. Up spent in here, all day, all day spent just trying to convince people to listen to me. But <laughs> all right, so I mean, you know, let's look at. We're gonna go through this mock, and for those listening on the podcast, we're gonna read it off for you. Obviously, you can see it down there on the, on the tubes, but. Uh, Casey had the first pick. Selfish took took number one. Brian Robinson or Brian <laughs> Bijan, my bad, Bijan. Uh, interesting pick number two. Jackson Smith and Jigba. This is a super flex tight end premium. You know he said he was gonna play this like he didn't need a quarterback. Don't do that. You got to take a quarterback even if well, you, you have, have all the quarterbacks. No, you, you don't do. have to. You got to trade out. Then you can't. Well, not sure, take you can't. The quarterback that's that's what I'm gonna say. You're more, we can't trade in these mocks. I mean, unless so. you're gonna tell me that JSN is Justin Jefferson, which maybe he is, but he's 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 not. You know, he's yeah. Not I mean, if you well, if you have Mahomes and Josh Allen, then you don't need a quarterback, and then you can take Justin Smith and Jigba if mm-hmm. you feel good about him. But you can probably Somebody trade back. Trade and gain even if it's just you know a, a third and a and a second next year or whatever or just however you got to do it you don't need yeah. a whole lot to move back a spot or two um and still be able to get those guys so somebody can get their choice you don't want to move back to to six probably or or seven but you you want to try to move back to four or five and and you know obviously you want to get the best deal you can but you don't have to be super duper stingy about it here yeah but even then if you can't get a great if you can't get something real good just take the quarterback these three quarterbacks are so valued in these startups way above jsn i mean significantly above jsn especially in superflex you got to take the quarterback if you can't get a good deal just just take because you can trade them throughout the season. There'll be a time when they'll be so valuable, you'll finally be able to get what what they're worth. So I I, I just maybe you maybe though you're, that's a big leap of faith. They're, they they could lose value. They could go up and down. You can't just trade back, and you don't have to take the quarterback. I know it seems like what you should most likely do for you know most likely you should timestamp number one. Have to must draft after one one the quarterback. <laughs> All right, 
Most so likely, yes. I had the next pick, and here comes my first player, uh, which if we were doing like five must-draft players, he might not make the list because it's a little obvious. But if you don't take Anthony Richardson, I think you're fucking up. So yeah. you oh, must dra- if you dark. have a chance, take Bijan. But then after that, if you have a chance to take Anthony Richardson, you f- you better do it. Yeah. We're playing yeah. fantasy here. What are we doing? I agreed. So then uh, two more quarterbacks, Stroud, Bryce Young, right? Right. I'd go Bryce and Stroud, but whatever. Yeah? Yeah, I'll take Bryce. I don't know. I don't, sure. I don't know, man. I don't, I'll tra- I would like to trade back one and then get something, you know? Because I yeah. don't know which one of those guys. It seems like Bryce is probably. Give me Bryce. Bryce is probably the better pick. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, give me Bryce, and then I'll still take Stroud. And then one six pops up, and it's J. Mike. He's a Gibbs lover, and JSN's gone in this scenario. Usually, that would be uh, a JSN, or one right. five would be JSN uh, potentially. Right. Right. Um, and then you know maybe Gibbs or Charbonnet or Flowers or somebody goes here, but it's Gibbs in this case here. And then JMW takes Will Levis at one seven. Ooh, I usually um, like what JMW's doing. I think Will Levis got to be on the must avoid don't draft list here for I, me. I would I would tend to agree. He's I'm not drafting him in that area. But if J um, might think, if J JMW thinks it's okay, then maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe good drafter I mean, there JMW could good be track wrong about anything, which is why I try not to talk in too many absolutes like Twitter. Uh, but you know. Could yeah. certainly be wrong about Levis, but it's not my favorite pick, but it is a quarterback. So, you know, yeah. you're already going against your quarterback theory there. Yeah. Um, well, I meant the three here, the three, <laughs> you know. Okay, right. the top three. All right, so then we go we go Addison at 1-8, Zay Flowers at 1-9. That's all standard operating procedure. Hey, must um, draft Zay Flowers. You get a chance to draft Zay Flowers when it's appropriate. I could take him there at 1-7, one 1-8, seven, one you know. Yeah, we we just had Matt Waldman on. I'm not sure if this will come out before or after, um, but I think this will come out before any Matt Waldman thing drops. But yeah, we just talked about him and I just I don't understand what you're watching. If you came away from watching all 22s or even the YouTube clips or whatever of Zay Flowers and you're saying, I don't don't get it. I don't understand what the what the hype is. I mean, he just didn't produce. He's a four. He's not an early declare. He's mm. a four year guy. He wasn't highly productive. Like if you can't figure all that stuff out on your own, man, just stop. Just stop it. Stop. You're never going to be good at this. Just stop. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty easy to figure out the context clues of answering all of those questions. Yeah. Um, anyway, Mayer at one one ten, Charbonnet at one eleven, and Kincaid at one twelve. So the tight ends getting elevated a little bit here. Um, I know you and a decent amount of the communities will, will will say, you know, don't draft the tight ends in the first round. Let somebody else do them and buy them the next year. And it's like, well, you know, you're probably not buying Kincaid and Meyer next year for, you know, anything less than what these guys just paid for them. You'd like to think so in a, in a, in a grand scheme of things. And sure, would you like to buy Meyer at 112 and Kincaid at 2-1? Does that feel so much better? For sure. But really, what's the difference here? If you like the tight ends, who gives a shit if it's 110 or 2-1 or 2-2, really, at the end of the day where you're, you know, having to take those guys. If you like them, take them. I, I'm a guy who, with with tight ends who I like in premium. I want to get to stack up and have a stockpile of good uh, tight end prospects on my bench. Uh, I'm not drafting Mayer and Kincaid with the idea of this year they're going to really help me out. You got to you got to go into it knowing that you're hey you're going to maybe take the sacrifice and there probably there could be a value dip, but knowing that, but like look, you know if you drafted McBride last year and you said well the value stinks on him even if you drafted him in the middle of the second round or whatever he's nowhere near close to that. Well guess what if he comes back this year and there is no DeAndre Hopkins. And yeah, maybe they start a little slow. The the the, the zone is probably going to be a mess. We don't know when Kyler's coming back. Yada yada yada. But there's there's no Hopkins. Rondell. I mean, Moore, there is still Hopkins, right? Yeah, but it pretty much. It's I think it's a done deal that he's really not going to be in Arizona uh, for the most part. Ertz is, I feel Ertz like is I unhealthy. Like maybe that might not be the case. Maybe, I don't I'll, know. I'll bet you a pie to the face he is not starting in Arizona next year. I don't think I can take the bet. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> It just anyway, doesn't seem like as done of a deal as I was assuming it was. There's no nuke. There's uh, Ertz is injured. You got Hollywood and you have Rondell Moore. I mean, they could certainly address the issues and receiver issues in the draft. I like Rondell Moore. Love buying him in the 13th round. And I love Hollywood Brown. But they don't have a middle of the field big body presence. If McBride goes out there and catches 
you know, obviously you set the, you could say 90, like you did in college, but even if it's, you know, 80, 75, if he goes out there and balls out, has six touchdowns, 75 catches, looks like a beast out there that he can be, he's going to be right fucking back up here in tight end premium in the top five rounds. Cause people are going to be dying to get a fucking tight end. And furthermore, what tight ends also do to have a stockpile of is I tight ends and tight end premiums that have a glimmer of hope or or seem like they could be good or had a lot of hope behind them get fucking deals done they're not the one that you are doing the deal for but you can add them on to a deal and they will put a deal over the top because everybody needs a fucking tight end um so you can stockpile those guys at the bottom of your bench and if you don't like taking them in the first i understand it i get it um but i'm personally okay with it yeah I mean, I don't think I really want to take – I'm probably going to miss Mayer. I, I might get some Kincaid if he falls to the early second. I think there's still some players in this draft that I'd rather have. Looking at the last mock Superflex startup that we did, mm-hmm. Titan Premium, Trey McBride went 14-1. You know, he had like – he had one really good game and, a, and like maybe three other like decent games where you saw, you know. But I think mm-hmm. right now he's still, you know, he's still obtainable probably – it's probably even value. You know, you probably can't get him for less than a second. Probably. Maybe right. you could. Maybe you if could you could get him for a third, I would do that all day long. Oh, for sure. And, 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 and but no, I don't think anybody's an doing that. Very player, right. you know, if you could somehow push it over the top forward thinking, you know, even though, you know, but someone might be thinking Kyler fucking Cardinals suck, you know, maybe like, be down on all that. They probably didn't. They might not draft a McBride in the first place if that's how they felt. But, uh, you know, I, I get it. I, I'm down to taking Kate. I, I can't do it this early um i think that's a little bit a little bit steep for me but you know i get it and kincaid i do feel like kincaid is going to hold some value because he's just you know he's on the tip of everybody's tongue so he's gonna have any of these any of these tight ends which seemingly at least these two are probably getting first round capital they're gonna hold value for a while uh you know you don't have to worry about that just get the mayor he's a better blocker in line you know he's a standard traditional you know he's not got that flex that that flexed out appeal of of move tight end that Kincaid just they can't stop talking about him and and the playmaker that he is and and how you know the 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 catcher of balls that he that he is you know they're very excited Mm -hmm. about that and 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 you watch games you know he's a great player and I'm I've taken him in several of these rookie mocks because I've got him at like two, 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 three. And and that's really probably just because I didn't know which running back to take at the time. And and the draft is going to sort that out for me. But uh, I think you get into the early second round. Kincaid could definitely be a must draft tight end because he's going to hold value and could splash and is going to have the draft capital. And but you like you said, you got to be patient, man. You got to know that you got to be patient going into this. Right. Right. So anyway, going into starting the second round, I'm back up. It's two one. Quentin Johnson's still on the Steel. board. Basically got to take him at that Steel. point. I can't um, put him on the must draft list because no. you don't necessarily have to draft him. But at two one, you fucking got to draft him. Certainly falling victim of right now to being what just the, the, the target of, you know, getting really knocked off the pedestal right now of where he once was the longer this draft period goes. And I think if, you know, if he goes in the first round in the NFL draft, I think, you know, people will state the value will stabilize. People will get a little more sure of it. They'll talk themselves back into Quentin Johnston. He, he can't um, fall out of the first round, right? There's not I don't that, think so. I don't, the, I don't think he should fall out of the way they talk about the caliber of players in general in this draft, you know, not just skill position, but like just overall, there's not that many top end. There's not that many players with first round grades. There's not 32 players with first round grades with these media analysts anyways. And, and they're talking to GMs and scouts around the league and, I just can't see him falling out of the NFL draft out of the first round. No, most most likely not, and he shouldn't fall out of your uh, super flex tight end premium first round either. So that was that was pretty easy yeah. easy pickings there. Um, I would be happy to do that all day long. No no questions asked. Uh, then two two Abanacanda goes, and you know I think you can sort these green boxes out a little different after the draft, and and I think they will get sorted a little different after the draft. But I'm not going to take Abanacanda there. Probably I don't know what would have to happen in the draft to take him right there. Because it, it would be surprising if what would have to happen in the actual draft for me to take him at two two would happen. I don't think it's going to. So I mean, probably. it just depends on which order he gets drafted in and how high. Right. It is. You know, I mean, he's and, fun and to he watch, would have to. It would have to be really high for me to be taking him that high. Um, so who would have been your pick if Quentin wasn't there? Um, 
if Quentin and the tight ends aren't there, um, then I'm probably taking Zach Evans. Okay. We'll, um, we'll so, get to so him. We'll get there. All um, right. So then I went ahead you're and took up. the quarterback because yep. I didn't know. I like Evans. I like Miller. I like two, three. Spears. I like a chain. I didn't know which one of those guys I should really take. So I took the quarterback. I think Hooker could sneak into the first round in the NFL draft. I liked what I saw from him at Tennessee. This was, you know, we had Wallman on. He's like, man, yeah, he's like a backup talent, basically. Maybe he could be a journeyman, and and maybe that's true. Uh, I don't know. He's old, you know, so you can't project a bunch of ceiling with him. And maybe it was just a super easy offense for him to run in college, and, and he's a product of that environment. But I liked what I saw. I thought he had good pocket awareness and movement skills, and he can kind of run a little bit and, mm-hmm. you know, accurate. I, I liked what I saw. And, so and and, there's, and if, there, there's a really good chance that he ends up going in the first round right now. Like, he, yeah. he's been getting boosted up at the end of the first round. Again, like I was kind of talking about at the end of this first round in an actual rookie mock draft. What the hell's the difference if you take somebody at fucking 111 or 212 and then saying, oh, well, you know, I'll take Dalton Kincaid at 22 because it feels better. It's like, well, if you like him, take him at 112. And in the NFL draft, you even get the fifth year option. So just trade up a little bit and get into the first round and get the fifth year option with Hooker. Right. Um, there's so not too to many, make some sense. There's not too many second round quarterbacks in the NFL because they'll just reach up and grab them in that first. Sure. sure. So, so I like that. Next is Cedric Tillman at 2-4. I don't really necessarily have a problem with that. He could potentially be on a must-draft list, list for me, um, but he is, he's not one of the guys that uh, I would timestamp for must-drafts. Yeah. Um, Jalen Hyatt, 2-5. Uh, that's going to be a miss Miss me with Jalen Hyatt. Uh, for me personally, I will not be drafting Hyatt, I don't think, unless he's you know third round, which he will not be. So, uh, nah, just, he's probably going to be a first-round wide receiver too. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe early second. Yeah, I'm just I'm not interested um, in Jalen Hyatt. I can't say I'm not interested. I like what I saw from him in Tennessee too, but I haven't dived into the all 22s with, with Hyatt, uh, so I, I can't speak super intelligently. I understand everyone's issue with him, and you know he's getting knocked for running a full. I was pretty flat. much out, of him, and then Steve Smith came out and crushed him, and I was like, all right, I was, <sighs> I was right there. I was right there. Steve's pretty good at this. <laughs> Steve, this is fucking hire Steve Smith in the fucking NFL, the office, like um, the front office should hire Steve Smith. Underdogs on it, they got him. Um, but you know, just a little confirmation bias there. So I was out on out on Hyatt. Um, Avoid group was, tank, Casey. Yeah, Tank Bigsby, two six. Uh, I know you uh, like Tank. I do you like, like tank. tank. You want to put him on the must draft? Are we time stamping this. Um, I would, I do really like tank Bigsby and I, th- he, he's probably going to be on a lot of my teams. Um, uh, I'm not going to quite stamp him with the must draft just ah. yet. Um, but I did, I did, uh, you know, I did like what I saw, uh, doing the evaluation of tank Bigsby. Uh, I know Matt Waldman pretty much hit me with what everybody else kind of says is they wanted to really like him and just couldn't kind of hot and cold, but he didn't string know. moves together. Well, Right. He, he, he's six foot, 210, came out as a junior. So early declare. Uh, Got to like that. Has pretty good numbers across the board here when you look at it from the, the PFF grades, uh, you know, uh, on the attempt threshold. He's not super high, but, you know, decent on the yards, uh, you know, decent on the TDs with 10, well, only one fumble, 5.5 uh, y- yards per attempt, which, you know, the 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 offensive line was pretty pretty poor over over at Auburn yards uh, yards after contact he was 13th with 740 yards after contact per attempt uh 4.16 that's 14 missed tackles for 61 uh good for 18th 10 plus runs 27 uh there's 30 you know that's 33rd so breakaway percentage uh was 50 Point one percent. That's twenty fourth. You know, really, really, just Yo, doing a pretty so good job. What's preventing you from putting him on this completely irrelevant must draft pre NFL <laughs> draft rookie? I just, I'm just not quite ready to stamp him yet because I just I, we need we need to be inside a certain range. I think to say to must draft him, or if he falls starts falling into third rounds of things, then he's for sure must draft. Like third rounds of rookie drafts, then he's for sure a must draft. You know, I really, again, I really do like him, and then I think that what you saw at least in my mind, I didn't hear anybody confirm this. Like you weren't getting this. You, you would see shades of tank running the ball. And every game that I watched, you'd see that s- some really good plays, but I think their offensive line stunk. And I think they made a nice effort to throw the ball his way. The, 
targets were he had 42 targets and 30 receptions this year they did have three drops in those and i i saw one or two of them because i didn't see every single game but one of the games i watched i definitely saw one um but you you got what they got to do is throw the ball out to him and get him in space and then you got to see more glimpses of what tank can do because he wasn't getting to showcase exactly what he can do uh, i think behind that offensive line consistently um, so I think the receiving is, is plus um, the, I thought the burst and acceleration was pretty good. I think the hands are good enough. Arn tackling is not going to work with this man. Um, he can finish the run. Now he does have a little bit of upright running style, uh, which I know people don't like. I thought he was pretty good inside and is out and, and he can create on his own. Maybe he gets a little too cute every once in a while. You'd like a little bit more one cut and go. Well, unless you want to take over doing timestamps, I'll put him on the fucking timestamp. for hey, must what dress. A- Pick him up. You can't be pitching me this hard on a guy who's not a must draft here. I just, I, I really like him, and I think the community's down on him a little bit. So, you know, hopefully he he continues to be on the back end of second rounds, and I can trade up and grab uh, some tank uh, as, as things go. Now, not the after next we guy, put him on this must draft list. He won't be. <laughs> the next guy, Zach Evans, is is highlighted two times and underlined on my must draft list, unless for some reason he goes in the sixth round. Um, you know, which we again, we just talked about Zach Evans with Mike with uh, Matt Waldman. Um, and, you know, he again was pretty biased, baby. He, that's right. He was he was again pretty high on him. But, you know, we've got a, a long video on Zach Evans that you can go watch. And then the the Matt Waldman video again, I, I retouch on 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 Zach Evans and just some of the stuff that you're upset about. Sh- you shouldn't be upset about. He's one of the better runners in the class. Um, Matt Waldman said he wouldn't be. Uh, shocked if if he turned out to be the best running back in this class like he's he says obviously that's probably going to be Bijan, but he zach evans absolutely has the talent and ability uh to be there and i 100 percent agree huge um, difference between Bijan and zach evans from a receiving standpoint so i don't know that he can i, I, I could you, you know? definitely definitely not uh, right. the most natural hands and be my biggest knock on zach evans again you know career basically seven point uh, oh, yards per carry. Um, you know, he, that means he's good. He thwarted off Kendra pretty much the entire time he was at TCU. And then he got turf toe and Ken or uh, Evans was outstanding from like week one through six, got turf toe at, at Texas Tech, I believe, came back at West Virginia at one point and just wasn't great and then shut it down the rest of the season. And Kendra came in and was good. But before that, Kendra had like five carries in each one of those like first six games, maybe not the Duquesne game because uh, Evans didn't really carry the much carry the ball in, the, in that week one matchup against them. Um, but then, you know, Kendra, I think, is great, too. So I'm not even upset about that. And then he goes over to, to Ole Miss, which I think is probably a, a step up in competition week in, week out and performs really well there. And then, oh, by the way, they get Judkins, who may, may be the best freshman in the nation and clocked at 22 miles an hour, 22 and a half miles an hour in the uh, Kent State game, I believe. What are you supposed to do there? You're not going to give Judkins run because Zach Evans is is really good. Like, no, you got you got two guys here who who can kind of do their thing and. and and they did. And, you know, is Zach Evans six foot two fifteen like we hope? No, probably not. He did come in a little light at the combine. I think he came in two oh eight at his pro day. Uh ran ran pretty good uh forty at the pro day. So, you know, probably floating somewhere around two oh six to two ten, uh, I would say. And he looks every bit of that. And I'm I'm just really not worried about those other silly transfer red flags and the other shit. Um, I just I I, I think Zach Evans the vision concerns are silly. I saw plenty of of great demonstrations of manipulation and, and and seeing exactly what he needs to do and his playing the position of running back, which is what should matter. I think he he passes the test uh, tenfold. So Zach Evans for sure a must draft. Yeah, I was uh, I was I was so pumped for you because you were just crushing that Matt Wallman interview and you 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 led off with like kind of your point of view and set up the question for Matt Wallman to come in and. There was several times throughout that interview where he was like, you know, I don't even really need to say much about this person because you you just said it all. You know, that's what mm-hmm. I was going to say, and that's how I would put it. And I was like, that's my boy. Uh, <laughs> for for Zach Evans to weigh in at 208, that's up six pounds from that com- that weak-ass combine weigh in at 202. My man mm-hmm. was slacking off, and it was like, I meant to bring that up with with, with Matt Waldman because he he, he kind of dove into the the um, off-the-field uh, issues 
you know, and he was almost telling us like we we wouldn't know. But and I think he got it wrong. He said his grandfather died. I think it was his grandmother. But I was like, I'm not going to jump in here and correct correct him on this. But like I wanted to be like, what do you think about that way? in though, you know, <laughs> but, like that just backs up. Like, is this man putting in the work? Like, what's he doing? That's a, that was a dumbass way in to come into the combine at 202 and you're listed at 215, you know, and, and you had seven days. Knowing you weren't going to run the forty, you can't just be like bulking up a little bit. I mean, I don't know how many you could put. You could put some pounds on. You know what was the forty time that he ran at the pro day? I think I saw four four something four four. I forget. I, I saw it. I saw Noah Hills get his question confirmed by Zach Evans' agent of his forty speed, and it was in the four four something. Um, so four four um, five. Not that's pretty strong. Not terribly worried about it, but Evans is on the must draft lifts a hundred percent for me. And then at two Oh eight, the next guy, Kendra Miller, who, you know, again, Oh, he caused, he caused him to, to uh, transfer, which, you know, uh, Matt Waldman brought up the fact that there was like Gary uh, Patterson was basically telling people that to, to transfer. And there was 30 guys potentially transferring out of TCU that, so it wasn't uncommon for a bunch of guys. Apparently they had, also had maybe uh, some NIL issues of that, that they weren't maybe thinking that they were going to get as much money. So he went and got, got some different money from Ole Miss, um, you know, but Kendra is a great player all on his own as well. Mm-hmm. Who's not getting, you know, and I see some hype from him every once in a while. And then, you know, then certainly not enough love, but again, you know, that five eleven. Uh, I don't know what he came in at, at the combine. I got him at two fifteen here on the original stat sheet, but I think he came in a little lighter than that, but also has the size and stature to do, uh, awesome stuff, uh, and be the the size and stature that you want in your running back. There, you're not worried. That's not a concern at all. So that's a nice positive check. Early Came declare two fifteen. Okay, at the combine. Early declare. So we like that. Got Gotta be him. early. That means he's good. Yeah, of course. Um, and then you know seventeenth in in yards this year. Um, overall six point three per attempt, tied for 29th. Uh, number six in touchdowns with 16, one fumble. Number 16 in yards uh, after contact was 729. Number 43 in yards after contact per attempt. Number 14 in uh, missed tackles forced. Number 14 in 15 plus yard runs or more. Breakaway percentage was in number 38. So just first downs, 59, just really crushing all that. The reception numbers were, you know, in the thresholds that you want them to be in. Career 6.7 yards per attempt. A great tackle breaker. Excellent contact balance, typically falls forward, always seems in control, and he can kind of make you miss. Reception ability is there. I feel um, like he's got some juice too, he, right? Yeah, easy left to right movement. Um, and then, you know, the second level speed I feel like is there. Like I feel like sometimes you don't see the abrupt acceleration because he's working through some stuff, but then you see the top end speed. And we didn't get to see it at the combine or the pro day because he's still working back from that injury. And the stiff arm is ridiculous. The, I think he has good patience. Matt was saying he needed to learn a little bit, a, a few things about picking and poking where he needed to go, but those were easy, fixable, learnable traits. He needs um, to learn. <laughs> So, you know, he's 20, he'll be 21 June 11th, you know, early declare. And and all those numbers that we're typically using are 20% filter on PFF. uh, Just so, you know, typically when we're, and that's no postseason. So typically those are the numbers that we're saying when we're citing these, uh, where they fell in in the the thresholds of missed tackles force and all that kind of stuff. Um, So anyway, Kendra Miller must draft, put him in the timestamp done sean tucker 2-9 um not going to be a must draft for me and something maybe came out today saying that this nfl they said that certain guy and everybody pointed to potentially being sean tucker where they're all worried about his medicals um so he may fall a little bit in the draft so he may not even be a second rounder uh <clears throat> next time we do this uh then luke musgraves um the tight end you know oregon state uh, so not, not, not Washington, but Musgrave there. I think you, maybe, maybe you put Washington instead of Musgrave there, um, but not a must draft for me. Then Marvin Mins at two eleven here. I think, I think that's a, that's going to be some good value. He, he's really screaming up the boards analytically. Mm-hmm. They love him. He's checking every box, crushing thresholds, crushing all this other stuff, but doesn't seem to quite maybe doesn't, doesn't seem to be a lot of spillover into him getting a ton of love from, when you listen to all the draft pundits, kind of who they talk to, what they see, he's not Never really in the top, 50, top 75 even. Um, Never but, hear his name. 
but he seems like he's got enough juice there. And if, if he st- if he, in the analytical community, I think if he stays in a certain threshold of draft that he will mm-hmm. easily stay in this area. If he doesn't um, just become dead to them all, them all of a sudden. Uh, sure. Sure. But I would, I would take Marvin Mims pretty much a hundred times out of a hundred over Jalen Hyatt. Um, you know, okay. I'd rather just yeah. wait. And I'm, I would, I'm not going to put him on the most draft list, but I could see him creeping up to the most draft list, especially at two eleven. you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this next guy, this next guy, um, Tajay Spears at two twelve. So uh, Tajay is going to be on the must draft, stamp it. must draft list for me. I, I saw everything I needed to see from him. You go, you flip on that tape, and he's just, it's it's to me. It's just got undeniable tape, man. The it way doesn't he moves, take one fucking minute, and you're like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, oh, that, shit. That guy's moving different out there. Yeah. Um, and I asked Waldman if he how he felt about those two ACLs, and he was like, "Dude, flip it on and look at him. Like, does it look like it's a problem?" Like that after two ACLs, I think you're all right. Right. So, I mean, yes, that's something in the back of your mind. And there was a period of time where your running back values got crushed by uh, old injuries from running backs. But right now we got Nick Chubb in there with a terrible knee injury who's holding it down for the injured running backs. And then you got had Frank Gores of the world who came in and crushed it with injuries. So, you know, I like, I like Tajay Spears a good bit. Great in the receiving game. Just uh, uh, like I said, you flip on the tape, it's, it's immediate. It's undeniable the way that guy moves around. There's not, you, you're not watching very many guys in in any class move around the way he does and like i said the receiving games 57 career uh targets 46 career receptions that's that's plenty enough uh for me to get it done uh only one drop this year 14 touchdowns 6.2 yards per attempt uh 1182 yards let's go for 20th 192 attempts let's go for 35 uh, overall zero fumbles 15 in yards after contact uh, with 733 3.82 yards per contact after uh Yards What's per attempt yards? after contact? Yes, correct. Yards uh, after contact per attempt. Bingo. There we go. Third time's the charm. Jesus. Um, 30th on on that uh, number. M- missed tackles, force 42. That's good for 49th. I thought it might be a little higher than that. Uh, but Well, it's hard um, to touch him. It is. But this uh, – He's Tajay's, got that curvy linear movement, baby. He's got that bend. He – has yeah, he's, he he also does have that kind a, of lateral jumping around, but also uh, has a downhill mentality too. He's not just trying mm-hmm. to stretch it at all the time. You know, he's got some fundamentals, and I was uh I was impressed to hear. You know, I I, I liked hearing what Matt Wallman had to say about him. Make sure you check out this next show. I think maybe we'll put the running backs portion out first. He was actually pumped about the receiving skills, and I yeah, I only I had access. Awesome. I think I only have access to like two. All, I think we only have two all twenty twos that we can watch on him, and then. Uh, I, I, there's not too many receptions that I can necessarily find. Now, Matt Wallman's got some other shit where he's, he's got really a million YouTube cut up games on, on not highlights, but cut up games on, on, uh, YouTube that you can find with like five minute stretches sure. of most of his touches. And you can, you can see the receiving there. Yeah. Um, the, what you worry about a little bit is 501, 201. But if I'm okay with drafting Gibbs, I'm okay with drafting Spears, which I'm okay with drafting Gibbs. So bring me to Spears. Um, did, he came in at 201 at the combine? Yeah, 510, 201. So a little lighter than what he did at the at the uh, senior bowl. I think that might have been 204, but obviously yeah, he wanted I to come he was in and run. But he must have come but he didn't, in I don't think lighter. he ran the 40 until his combine or until his pro day. So. Right, he came um, in with a 39-inch vertical and a 10-and-a-half-inch broad at the combine and then yeah. waited yep. to do the... So, Tajay Spears on the must draft lift for me, for sure. And then yeah. it's back to me at 3-1, Josh Downs. I mean, I, I just keep getting gifted uh, these players that I have I to basically pick here. It's like, man, I wish these players weren't there. I want to see who you'd be taking <laughs> if it was a hard pick, you know? But you got yeah. Quentin and Josh Downs. It's like... Well, I, I usually try to take the one one in the rookie draft just because I want to see who what the public makes the decisions on these picks rather than me making no, the decisions. We don't know we don't know what we're fucking doing. I need you to tell me. <laughs> well, I can tell you as we're doing this. So uh yeah. Josh Downs three one, that's easy. And then Roshan at three two, which Matt Foreman said he would have taken Roshan at two four. He just wanted to let him fall. So Roshan could have been up there. I'm not I don't know what to do with Roshan. I, I do like him a good bit, certainly not on the must draft list for me just yet um, but I, I do like what I see a good bit from from Roshan um, and I know he, he seems to be in the draft circles he's always kind of stayed kind of a little elevated more than the fantasy circles and I feel like the fantasy circles are sort of catching up right now uh, so it'll be interested to see kind of where he lands um, and then you're up with with three three yeah so 
it was a pretty easy pick for me. I feel like Devin A. Chain. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I sh- I don't know if I want to put him on the must drafts. I mean, I've seen at three so three much- for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent at three three in this particular draft. Got to take him there. I've seen him go in the first. You know, we've done several different mm-hmm. rookie mocks this off season. This is the first time we did four rounds because you know what are people doing before this draft? Y'all know what you're supposed to do in this fucking fourth round. No, <laughs> like we're gonna let this NFL draft. And if you're having your rookie draft before the NFL draft, stop. Stop it. I'm gonna every opportunity I get to say that, I'm gonna take it and fucking say it. I don't shut them down, open up shop. Yeah, stop this madness. What are you doing? Well, you know, shut up, stop. Uh so there's a lot of variance in A chain, and I love the player. The only problem is his weight, you know, mm-hmm. 185 pounds. What are you supposed to do with that? He doesn't look 185 pounds, he doesn't run 185 pounds. Sometimes he gets lit up like he's 185 pounds. Sometimes he, he's not a pile pusher. He's not three yards in a cloud of dust, although he, he does his best. He he, mm-hmm. he runs it between the tackles. You watch the oh, tape. Oh, sure. He's sure. fucking grinding it out. Had a lot of carries. And then is a savant in the passing game. Like, really good. And so you wouldn't get a savant, but I'd, I'd go good. He's fucking good. Like, I yeah. like what I saw. Yeah, and me too. You get him with, like, you know. You get him in a Darren Sproles role with his coach is going to use him like that. There's several coaches that if they took this man, like uh, McDaniels down in Miami, fucking Sean Payton in Denver, you know, you get a couple landing spots where he's going to go in the early second round of your rookie draft and he might still be a must draft. And if he goes to like a bad landing spot and he falls to the third round, then I think he's still a must draft. So maybe he should be a must draft uh, because regardless either it's going to be a good landing spot and then i'm in if you can utilize him because mm-hmm. he's going to be efficient that's where he's going to you know he's not going to get 20 carries a game he's not going to get 15 carries a game he needs he to be efficient to 12 be. to 15 touches a game yeah if he can get me the Tariq cohen you know the mm-hmm. the the because he's 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 explosive you know he can house it sure and i just you got to use him right, and I don't know. I want to see where they value him in the NFL draft, and there could be a point where it's you should let him fall, but, one, you know, 3-3, three, three, that was a no-brainer for me because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was looking at, like, Rasheed Rice, or I didn't really know Chase Brown. I'm not, I'm not sure. A-chain fell, and I was like, word, word. That's easy. Oh, pick. That's easy. Easy. Pick. easy. So 3-4 was probably kind of an easy pick for Foreman to Butte at that point. I think you got to scoop him up. Uh, mm-hmm. I got a good discussion with Ma- Matt Waldman uh, w- with Butte and then Rashi Rice. Trying to get the that next sex party, dog. <laughs> Rashi Rice at 3-5. I think I like that, too. I'm not going to say must draft that. At 3-3 three, three, three to 3-5 three, here, I put him on the must draft list at this value. Yeah. Um, and then I just I saw, you know, Rashi Rice broke his toe in, like, the end of September or whatever. So he would played that whole season with a broken toe. Um, and then the reception perception came out and – really crushed him in this last week or two. And it's like, did, did you watch the games? Did you watch how they run their offense? That Like the reception perception just proved out exactly how they run their offense. It's a lot of short intermediate screens and then a long shot here or there. And, and Rice is, is great at that. And I, I think, I think Rice is going to be a nice player in the league. Um, especially again, was playing. You didn't even hear a peep about him having a broken toe. Mm, yeah, um, I, didn't know. I, I just yeah. happened to catch that in, in, a, in passing, through yeah, we did an SMU fan rookie, and then we did a rookie profile video on him and we died on those I, things. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, we, I, was, I saw it from an SMU fan in a comment somewhere, or maybe even on the reception perception. And then I went and checked and saw a doctor basically saying how he broke his toe and, and just played the whole season. Um, so Rasheed Rice, I think hopefully he stays down because I think he could be a must draft yeah, and, right. and, a, and a favorite of ours because we did like – some of the stuff that that he put down. Yeah, he's um, got some juice. He mm-hmm. the way he goes up and attacks the ball in the air. If you could take his attack mentality and the ball skills and put that in Quentin Johnston, if Johnson can develop into Rasheed Rice at the catch point, then Quentin, <laughs> then Quentin Johnson would be the first wide receiver off the board. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe the second, but I think you probably you, you got to take JSN. I was when we did the Johnston profile video. I was like, I kind of want to take Johnston because yeah, that so was early enticing. on. And it was we, very yeah. early on, but I mean, you you could see you could see the problems with Quentin Johnston. I just didn't know that how big of a deal that everybody was going to make it. And and Waldman certainly came on and crushed him for his mm-hmm. you know, softness, drops. basically. Yeah, his softness of, of being the big guy and and you know with the ball in his hands, not soft. With the ball out of his hands, a little soft. 
Uh, right. so, and definitely faster is, than that 40 that he ran on his yeah, pro day. Why are you yeah. even running the 40 at all? Then if that's what you're going to run, that that yeah. certainly pretty much put the nail in the coffin for the haters. Like, Yeah, but all know, the other three, bursty metrics were really yeah, good. He so. did just come explode at the combine. But Rasheed Rice, you know, that just the way – his mentality with the ball in the air, he's got some speed. I don't know. I didn't see the reception perception thing. I mean, kind of – like if that thing was, you know, like – we wouldn't have to do this anymore if any of these people figured it out, you know? Right. So were, were they crushing him on like a route tree and stuff or did yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, coverage yeah. or what? what like, it was, it was just the route tree and, and yeah. success rates on things. And it was like, it's just, that's what, if you watched him, that's what he ran and he, well, he was successful on the routes that he ran. Yeah. Um, right. You know, so uh, like next that. pick, next pick, uh, Eric Gray, Oklahoma, um, not, not a hundred percent sure on him, but I know Waldman had him inside the top, 10 or 12 guys. So he liked him. J Mike, uh, right on, on Wallman's coattails there. And then this was before that, uh, Washington, I think for JMW there, who's a, a habitual double early tight end drafter in our startup drafts gets a, gets a diamond in the rough right there. Uh, that'd be a must draft mm-hmm. three, seven. I don't love Washington. Uh, but at the, in the middle of the third, yeah, I yeah. like there. And then McBride at three eight, I think he might start to touch a, a must draft list at some point. You know, no catches with him is is what really just turns everybody off. Um, but he, you know, again stays with decent. Seems to be a lot higher in draft pundit circles oh, than like Kuiper. Fucking loves this guy. Yeah, he can't wait to get his name out of his mouth. And is it is it the old? You know, I know he didn't catch any balls, but like you know, I don't, I don't certainly don't think a guy of his caliber can't not catch balls. Uh, so you know. I, we shall see with the McBride and I think he'd be a big, one of the biggest movers if he gets good capital and then they'll still be the people who there's no way he can be good because he doesn't, he didn't catch balls in Same college. People it's who like, missed look, out on Kenneth if you're Watson. this elite at running the fucking football and you got a work ethic, you can learn how to fucking catch man. That's a coach's job. Put this man on the jugs machine and catch Kenny Walker. Couldn't catch either. And then there was a game where Seattle couldn't run the ball and they started throwing the ball to Kenneth Walker, and it was like, oh, shit, Kenny Walker's exploding all over the place, and he can catch this. is so crazy. Um, and now Kenneth Walker is basically a second- or third-round startup pick, so mm-hmm. well, let's Super go. Super flex, yeah. Um, right, which you know we're usually doing. So uh, we got Jaden Reed next, who I know is a sleeper in some circles there from Michigan State. Matt Waldman has him pretty highly ranked, so – um, you know, that's a, a nice stab by Colt there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam Laporta tested really well from Iowa and they're, they're a factory. So this, this guy never uh, had a good uh, tight end at mm-hmm. Iowa, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know what they're doing over there. This guy went all tight ends on his draft, which, yeah. hey, let's go, baby. He must have been a Twitter acceptor. I don't know, Nikki BTD. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. Yeah. Uh, then Big Smooth takes what a uh, Evan. rookie draft. I can't do that. All rookie, <laughs> all tight ends. I don't, I don't hate it. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> Uh, Evan Hull, um, I probably, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people like him. He's, he's a big sleeper for a lot of people. We'll see what happens at a Northwestern caught a lot of balls, decent, d- decent looking player, but, but not a, uh, who's at the senior bowl. So, uh, not an early, uh, early commit there, <laughs> early, early exit. And then Chase Brown at three twelve. Um, I think he's going to, he's been habitually in the third round. I really like Chase Brown uh, on yeah. the must draft list, probably for me, especially yeah. because of where you can get him. Um, we could timestamp that one. That's fine All with right. me. All um, right. He he's older. He took the JUCO route. Um, and you know, is he the most powerful player you've ever seen? No. Um, but and and you know, sometimes he lacks some creativity behind the line of scrimmage. I think he's better on the second level with with skirting people. Um, but I think he's a very effective runner. He showed the ability to be a workhorse. Um. You know, and then he's he, but he he didn't grind it out the whole time there. This year and last year a little bit, he really showed you he could do that, and and he put up some big numbers, uh, nine point seven, uh, nine RAS score. So he crushed uh, all the athletic stuff, um, and then I think he is a very plus receiver as well. So I think he can come out and and kind of give you even if it's just two down work. You know, I think he's he's plus 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 in the receiving game here. Uh, career target 67 55 receptions um and the speed is outstanding uh 100 yards nine consecutive games uh in 22 uh so you know did have a decent uh o line i think at illinois um but you know the, the numbers m- miss tackles force number 3 uh 10 plus yard runs uh number 2 uh 15 plus runs tied for 6th um you know tied for 8th in first downs 
for runs, yards after contact, number five, nine, 935 uh, with those. And then, you know, number two in overall yards, 1,632, um, you know, did have some fumbling issues. So that's something you got to clean up, especially if you're going to be in the, a fourth round draft pick, you're going to have less of a leash. Um, and you're going to need to clean that kind of stuff up. But again, people are going to like him because he's a little older. Um, and, you know, it isn't you really got to grind through a lot of tape with with Chase Brown. And I think Waldman liked Chase Brown a decent amount, too. Um, so I would put Chase Brown on my must draft list uh, right now for me. Um, so back to back must drafts. I got I'm at four one here. And I'm going to go Xavier Hutchinson here at four one. Um, really 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 like what i saw from xavier hutchinson um he's he, he giving you a little bit bigger frame that 62203 um so he he's he's giving you the bigger frame the bigger body uh, he can give you that that red zone rebounder kind of stuff and he can give you he's not necessarily going to crush you on the long speed but he understands how to stack you up and walden was giving him some love on the play action kind of stuff but i think the short and intermediate stuff the quickness uh from xavier hutchinson is so good so underrated and this guy has just been slept on the entire draft process and i just kind of got around I, I was in on him a little early and then i just hadn't done a deep dive so i deep dove before waldman came on and just really came to like this guy now again a little older went the juco route uh 22 to 23 but that doesn't change anything about how that elite quickness and speed that he uses in that short intermediate game that that is was really just i can't believe people aren't loving this guy uh, a little more and i think he's going to get a, his stock boosted up a little bit through the combine or through the uh, nfl draft because i think people are going to be uh very interested uh in him like the third overall or fourth overall receiver graded by pff um by them and and just every year got a lot better a thousand over a thousand yards this year 107 receptions this year uh, that was number one um so just absolutely uh crushed it yards per route run seven point or two point uh seven two and tied for 30th uh so he can he does have a little bit of a yak ability too um you know he was tied for 19th 447 now obviously a lot of volume there uh, but that bigger frame he does understand how to use it how to get downhill thwart people off of him while he's running um so six six drops out of those 107 receptions so that's obviously a lot of volume so 5.5 uh drop percentage there so could clean that up a little bit um but pretty good in the contested catch rate um uh at yeah, and pretty good in the contested catches as well. So kind of just checks a lot of boxes outside of being a crazy vertical threat. But I think he he can do a little bit of that too. And I would love, you know, Niners, baby. Niners taking Xavier Hutchinson, pairing him back up with Purdy. He's a good block, really good blocker. Um, I, I said that on the show last night. Mingo or Xavier Hutchinson to the Niners to potentially replace Brandon Ayuk next year. Uh, it could, could, could be a, a good call for me. I feel like uh, 29%. Uh, slot percentage from Xavier, 70% out wide this year for him. Uh, so obviously, again, versatility. So must draft Xavier Hutchinson uh, for me there. All right. Well, why don't you take us through the rest of this fourth round? Are there any other must drafts listed? Let's just name them off. And, and Okay. Well, I'll up. just I'll hit the names uh, on these guys. A.T. Perry, 4-2, Parker Washington, which I know a lot of people like A.T. Perry. I haven't deep dove into A.T. Perry, but he's got some love. So there could be... He could be a potential guy who ends up as a must draft first. Parker mm -hmm. Washington gets a little love. Uh, Ibrahim, nice sleeper for a lot of people. He was a really, really good player and had an injury two years ago. Um, so he's interesting. McIntosh, I think, got really stymied by the combine, not being quite as fast, but it seems to be a good receiver. Um, you got uh, Luke Schoonmaker uh, from Michigan uh up here at at four six he's i saw a little buzz for him today deuce vaughn at four seven uh you know hey whatever it's the fourth round take a stab on on deuce um i know a lot of people i don't not great at pronounce puka nuka or i don't i'm not how to pronounce his name uh, but he's he's been getting some love i know uh debro really has been singing his praises um and he was a christian watson guy last year so um you know put a little respect on on uh, the byu receiver there then Kuntz. Uh, Kraft, two tight ends, and then Duggan and Stetson Bennett. Um, you know, no no DTR, so maybe you want to get him super late in the fourth round. Um, and then the uh, the the guy, the, the tight end from uh, Penn State, Strange, I think is is his last name. And uh, one of these last 
uh, first draft podcasts. They were really the tight end coach for Penn State was t- talking about how he had coached. They were saying, oh, this guy has coached a lot of really good tight ends in the league. And he was saying, I'd bet money that this guy's going to end up being one of the better tight ends in the league. Now, it's obviously draft stock and you're trying to get this guy. But uh, Strange didn't get drafted here as another tight end. Uh, so and no Mingo drafted here, which was was odd. Mingo's really rising up. Um, so I think by the time we do this next one, Mingo will be up in here and maybe even up as high as the second round there. Um, so um, fun draft, fun conversation here. Um, you got anything else to add? No, I mean, hit that like, subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Who who, who are your must drafts? Let us know. Hit us in the comment section below. If you're listening on the podcast, let me get a five-star review on the iTunes or the Spotify's. Appreciate you for listening. We're doing extra shows. Yeah, Three Patreon, baby. We're gonna get some. We'll get some rookie rankings here. You know, a week or week or so after the draft, I'll, I'll have some rookie rankings up there, uh, so you can get those uh, from us. Yeah, head over to Patreon.com/slash the FF Dynasty. Get access to the Discord channel. Chat it up. We got all kind of trades and chit chat going back and forth in that in that uh, community. Sure. And love the pleasure, Chester's. Um, come support your boys. If not, you know, just hit us with that subscriber uh, five star review. That helps us out. Keeps us. Uh, progressing forward and bringing you more content. So appreciate y'all for listening. Um, we'll be back with a bunch of Matt Wallman breakdowns. We've got all three skill position sets, so make sure you're looking out for that. And then, man, the draft will be here before you know it. So, and then for it'll sure. be like a whole nother season starts right there. Yeah. We'll got the throw industry everything mock. you knew out the window. and Got the industry mock cranking up here soon. We're doing that again. So I've got a nice little list I'm, I'm building here um, of, of a bunch of different YouTube guys and a different, you know, uh, some guys from last year, so a bunch of new guys. So it's, it's be on the lookout for that. That's worth a subscribe just for that. Yeah. Um, so again, we appreciate y'all and we'll catch you next time. Peace. All right, buddy. I feel like I should do some editing in this thing. Well, you should go to sleep.